Let's have a look at what we mean by the best solution and how to find it. To do so, we're going to simplify the problem slightly more. We're instead going to look at putting a line through three points, while before we were looking at a line through four points. So in this particular case, we have the point one, one half, that's this point right here, two, two and a quarter, that's this point right here, and three, two, that's this point right here. We'd like to determine the best line that approximately goes through these points. So how do we do that? Well, let's start by visualizing this. What do I have here? The blue square here helps us visualize the column space of the matrix A. Notice that the column space is just a span of the vectors that make up the columns of the matrix. And in addition to that, I also give the vector B, which is this red vector here that points to this spot, this point that has coordinates one half, three, two and a quarter, two. So as we spin this, we can see better what's going on. And what you notice is that the vector B is not in the span of the two columns. Let's see here if we can stop this. What this particular freeze frame shows nicely is that B can be written as a vector that is in the column space of the matrix A, that's the vector Z, plus a vector that is perpendicular to it. And that makes this point that Z points to, the point in the column space closest to the point to which vector B points. If we can identify that point that is in the column space that is closest to the point that B points to, then we can solve the system with that right-hand side instead and come up with the best approximation for the solution vector x. Now we're ready to develop the math that helps us answer this question. So we want an x that approximately solves this. And let's give the vector that solves that a name. Let's call it x hat. What we just illustrated is that b can be written as a, the vector z that is in the column space of a plus a vector that's perpendicular to the column space of a. z is in the column space of a, w is in the space perpendicular to the column space of a. Now this is where this picture that told us about the fundamental spaces comes in. We know that we can solve for vectors that are in the column space of A. We know that the subspace perpendicular to that is the left null space. And we also saw that that was the same as the null space of A transpose. So we know that W must be in the null space of A transpose. But what does that mean about W? It means that A transpose times W must map to the zero vector. So, zero must be equal to A transpose times W, but notice that W plus Z was equal to B, and therefore W is just equal to B minus Z. What that means is that A transpose times B minus Z is equal to zero, but notice that Z is that point in the column space for which we're trying to now solve to get our best approximation, approximate solution. We're looking for a vector x hat that satisfies that, let's see, a transpose times b minus a x hat is equal to zero. But we can distribute a transpose and we find that a transpose b minus a transpose a x hat is equal to zero. And then we can bring this to the other side and flip the whole thing, and we get this right here. Now this equation here is known as the normal equation. And solving the linear least squares problem by solving this equation right here is known as the method of normal equations. 
it turns out, and this is, uh, I believe, an exercise, that A transpose A is non-singular. In other words, we can solve for x hat regardless of what right-hand side we end up with, as long as A has linearly independent columns. So let's illustrate how we then use that to solve our very simple problem. Here is our system of linear equations. What we have to do is solve A transpose A times X equals A transpose B. Okay. The solution of that then is this solution X hat that we're after, except that in this particular case, the components of that were the coefficients of our line, and we actually called those gamma 0, gamma 1. So I guess that's just a little bit confusing, but let's keep going. So we can form A transpose B. That's a matter of taking our matrix in our right-hand side, transposing the matrix, multiplying it times the right-hand side, and if you work it out, you get this vector with two components. We then form A transpose A. That's a matter of transposing matrix A and multiplying it times A, and that gives us this square 2 by 2 matrix, where notice the matrix is symmetric. And if you go back a couple of uh, weeks, I believe there was an exercise that asked you to prove or disprove that A transpose A is always symmetric. It is always symmetric. So then, one way you could actually solve this because this is just a 2 by 2 matrix and therefore we can actually easily compute its inverse is to compute the inverse of that 2 by 2 matrix, which we saw was 1 over the determinant, and then you swap these two elements and you negate those elements, which gives you this matrix right here. And that then turns out to be this matrix right here, where for simplicity, we don't actually have to go and multiply by the 1 over 6. We can just leave it there. And we then find that x is equal to a transpose A inverse A transpose B, which we can now compute as this matrix times that vector, which then gives us the solution 1 12th for the first component and 1 quarter for the second component. And if we use that then to draw a line, we get this red line right here, which indeed seems to be a pretty good line through the three points. Now, let's see, what do we have? We now have that we've approximately solved for our solution. This vector that solves it, that is the best solution, approximate solution, was given by this expression right here. That was our x or x hat, whatever you want to call it. If we then say, but what was that point that was closest to B that was in the column space? That's a matter of taking that solution vector and multiplying it by the matrix A, because then you take the linear combinations of the columns of A that gives you the right-hand side that then is in the column space and is closest to the original point to which the right-hand side vector B pointed. If we then go back to this red line, what does this mean? The, the vector of right-hand sides here really corresponds to the points on the line that have the coordinates 1 and then the first component of the right-hand side here to the second component, and this should have been a 3, and then the third component right here. So in summary, if you want to solve AX approximately equal to B, what you do is you really solve for the right-hand side vector that is closest in the column space of A. And then you solve AX equal to that new right-hand side, for which there now is a solution. The solution to that solves the normal equation. And one way you could do that then is to actually invert and multiply. But we made a big spiel in... Uh, let's see, week eight, that one should never invert a matrix. So you may just want to form this right-hand side and then solve with this matrix instead and maybe do an LU factorization or better yet, in an enrichment, you learned about a Kolesky factorization for symmetric positive definite matrices, which you really should use here. 
And the way I always remember this is that I say, well, I would like to solve AX equals B. And to come up with the normal equations, all I do is I multiply both the left and the right hand side by a transpose. The vector in the column space of A that is then closest to the right hand side vector B that we started with is given by A times this best solution which is known as the orthogonal projection of B onto the column space of A. Let's go back and see what that means. The vector B points to this point right here. The vector Z points to the point in this plane that's closest to the point that B points to. The vector Z is the projection of the vector B onto the column space of A. Strictly speaking, we should, we should say it is the orthogonal projection. The insights from this week set us up for next week when we use orthogonal projection onto the column space of a matrix to do what's known as low rank approximation of a matrix. And the example that we use to illustrate this will be data compression.